there was one issue. When it came to, when it came to the other percentage of student athletes, 44, come here, 44 percent struggled finding their purpose after sport. What does that mean? That means that yes, more than half are thriving, but there's still a large percentage who haven't found out just yet what they're interested in. Don't know just yet what they're going to do after sport, because I'm sure we'll probably say like 10 to 15 percent expect to go pro, which isn't a bad number. We can't be mad about that. But now the question becomes, what are we doing with the time that we currently do have? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball. I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is where we help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. Okay, so, man. One of the things that I really enjoy is being able to work with student athletes. Like it's it's amazing having the opportunity to be able to just connect with them, just to hear more about their journey and just hear the things that they're all about, especially when it's outside of their sport. So check out this stat. OK, the NCAA put out uh, just some information saying that 56% of their student athletes are thriving after sport, which is amazing, right? More than half. That's awesome anywhere except in grades, of course, right? And everybody wants to get way more than half when we're talking about grades. But, but there was one issue. When it came to, when it came to the other percentage of student athletes, 44, come here, 44 percent struggled finding their purpose after sport. What does that mean? That means that, yes, more than half are thriving, but there's still a large percentage who haven't found out just yet what they're interested in. Don't know just yet what they're going to do after sport, because I'm sure we'll probably say like 10 to 15 percent expect to go pro, which isn't a bad number. We can't be mad about that. But now the question becomes, what are we doing with the time that we currently do have? What's going on, ballers? You might be listening to this audio version of the podcast, or you might be watching even the video version of the podcast. And you're probably thinking, well, what would it take for John to come to our campus? What would it take for John to come to our school and to teach our students media training, to talk about podcasting and even the whole world of media? Well, luckily for you, all you have to do, friend, is just click the link just down below in the show notes where it says book John to speak. All right. And then we can go right there. We can set up time to have a conversation. And I would love to learn more about you. Love to learn more about your student athletes and how we can serve and support them at a high level. OK, so just hit the link just down below and we look forward to having a conversation with you. Right. What are we doing with our programming? What are we doing on campus? What are we doing with the time that's before us right now? So today I want to I want to encourage you to do a few things. Right. We've all seen the movies. We've seen the shows where. They have these people that show up and it might be Valentine's Day or it might be just a networking type thing. And then they do speed dating. <laughs> Y'all speed dating. I want you to take take the flow and take the theme of speed dating. And I want you to do that with your potential interests. All right. So I want you to do this. Get a piece of paper and I want you just to list out. All the things that you're currently interested in, not what you major in, not what you want to do for a career. It can be the it can be the interest of the week. It doesn't have to be something that you're committed to. You're not married to this thing. OK, you're not married to this thing at all. All right. Then after we list out these interests, right, I'm, I'm interested in learning more about broadcasting. I'm interested in learning more about journalism. I'm interested in learning more about being a blogger. I'm interested in something with social media, right? We're going to list these things out. Do it on a piece of paper. Do it on your phone. I don't care. Just make the list, okay? That's the first thing. And then after we make this list, now going into your week, I want you just to take 10 minutes a day. 
Come here. I want you to invest 10 minutes a day into going through these three interests, right? So that's like three and a half minutes per interest, right? So it could look like you doing, it could look like you taking time to read a blog. Could look like you taking time to reach out to some people who are in the industry of this particular interest, right? It could look like you reading a book, watching YouTube videos, listening to an audio book, talking to somebody about this interest who knows something about this interest. And the reason why I want you to do it this way is because as you begin to invest those three minutes starting out, three minutes is not a heavy lift. As you begin to invest those three minutes learning about this area, learning about these things, now what you're going to start to see is there are, out of these three areas, two of these I'm not interested in. So what can we do now? We can go on the list and we can scratch those out. But let's say the third one we still do have an interest in. Good. Keep that and do three more minutes the next day. Family, I know you're enjoying this episode so far. I know you've been taking in the content and I hope you're taking notes, right? I hope you're taking notes. But if you have not just yet hit that follow button on the podcast, I need you to hit it. I need you to hit it, okay? Because I want you to be tapped in to where you get the latest episodes. And even when we drop some surprise bonus episodes, you want to be the first to know and you want to be the first to get it, okay? So wherever you're listening to this podcast at right now, Apple, Spotify, wherever, go ahead, hit that follow button so you're tapped in and you get the episodes first. All right, now back to the episode or the next week. Right. I advise you go through the week and I advise you do it daily. Uh, And the reason why is because the faster you do it, the faster you'll get to the point to where you identify. I really like doing this. Right. And I really don't like doing these other things. But okay, so look, here's what we're doing. Like I said, we're going back to the list. We're marking them off. Right. This is the daily trifecta. I call this the daily trifecta. So we go back to the list. We mark off the things we're not interested in at all. Okay, And then. The ones we are interested in will circle on our list. Yeah, we'll circle. If you write it on paper, if you do it on the phone and you have to put like a check, like green check by it and do like the red X. If you're like in the emojis and, uh, you know, I I like doing those because you get to see like cool color things beside it. Uh, But then we're going to just go down through the list. So now let's say we had 30 interests. So over the course of about a month, we'll be able to determine, wow. Look at what I really like. Look at what I enjoy. And then we can begin to start diving deeper into these, the ones that we like, the ones that we enjoy. So now if we start out, let's say we start out at junior year, right? Your junior year, you spend 30 days. Now you've identified something that you have more interest in. Now you can take the time to begin to talk with people in student athlete development, talk with your career counselors, talk with the people in academics. And now you begin to say, I want to do more things related to this. I want to do more events related to this. I want to show up to these type of events because I know that's going to further my interest in this area. Right. So make the list. After that, then we start trying these areas of interest, right? Seeking them out, seeing what's required to further pursue something in this industry or in this interest. And then lastly, after you've done that work, lastly, I would suggest now you hop on LinkedIn. And if you don't have a profile, we need a profile, okay? We, we need a profile. It's it's a professional network building tool. OK, so hop on LinkedIn and then now we're going to start to reach out to people. Right. But before you just start reaching out to people, you want to make some tweaks on your LinkedIn. OK, make some tweaks on your link. And I'm going to drop. I'm going to put my LinkedIn uh, just down below in the show notes. Uh, please connect with me on LinkedIn. And I'm just going to put mine just as an example so you can see one to where, you know, you can do some of the stuff t- to your LinkedIn that I did to mine. Or connect with me on LinkedIn, Jonathan Jones. But now we want to start to reach out to people who work in these spaces, in these industries that we have interest in. 
and then we can let them know, hey, Sally Sue, I took the time and, you know, I've been researching about marketing. I see that you're a marketing executive. I would love to schedule some time with you so that I can learn more about what it is and what it looks like to do a, a day in a life as a marketer, right? What it looks like to market for a Fortune 500 company. I would just love to learn more from you because I don't know anything just yet in terms of real-time experience, real-time knowledge around marketing. So if it's okay with you, I would love to set up a call to where we can do an informational interview. Use that exact language. Hi, Sally Sue. I would love to set up a call to where we can do an informational interview because I am a junior in college and I am looking to really focus on preparing for my transition, period, on period. You see, when you began to do this and when you began to have these conversations with people, now people are like, oh, wow, this individual is serious about what they're doing, right? And then when they see you're serious, that's when they're more than likely to pour in. And I would advise you when you do this conversation, set up your phone, get a voice memo and record it and tell them before. So I'm just wanna let you know, uh, as I'm going through this process, I wanna be fully present with you, right? So if you don't mind, I would love just to record this conversation on my phone. So that way I can go back and I make sure I don't miss any information. And that way I can really apply the information that you give me. And when you tell people this, people say, oh, yeah, for sure. That's not an issue because they ain't going to say nothing like crazy like that. So, family, that's going to wrap up this episode of Beyond the Ball, where we just broke down and talked about my daily trifecta framework. Uh, because I want to help you not be in the 44% that's struggling to find your purpose. I want you to be in that 56%. Because if, we're, I, if we've identified our purpose faster, then now we can invest our time, our energy, and do the things that are intentional and impactful earlier. And if we're doing those earlier, then we're going to make a greater impact. I'm Jonathan Jones. This has been a Speak Your Success Media production. And once again, this is Beyond the Ball, where we help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. If you're listening to this episode, I would enjoy I would appreciate if you know you took a screenshot of the episode and then tagged us at Beyond the Ball Podcast. And then we would love to share you in our story. All right. Until next time, peace. And God bless.